Hello, everybody. I'm excited to be here. I'm calling in from a hotel room in Vancouver today with my good friend, Finca, and we're going to be talking all about sales. Now, I know sales is kind of one of those like icky topic. People like don't love it, but yet as entrepreneurs, sales is a huge part of what we do. So we kind of have to figure out how to embrace it. Um, so Finca, you wrote a book called Self From Love. You have a program, like you have a podcast, all the things, and it's around this idea of selling from love. And I absolutely love this because I think most people would think those two things were counterintuitive to each other, but uh, I can't wait to dive into this conversation. So thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, I'm just happy to be talking about my most favorite topic. So I'm glad to be here. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So um, let's talk about, you have a line in your website, you say, transform the way your company sells without compromising your purpose, people or profit. Which I was like, Oh, that's so good. Talk mm -hmm. to us a little bit about about that. Let's start there. So Often what happens is, you know, as you said, like selling and this whole connotation of what selling is um, has a lot of labels attached to it. It's icky. It feels like I'm pushing something on some someone that I need to get them to do something that they don't want to do. Um, it can also often resort to, I've got to get a sale, targets, quotas, um, meeting objectives, our business objectives or our goals. And so we can miss out on our client and putting them in front of everything. And as a result, what can often happen, we, we land in the space of transactional selling and transactional selling, mm -hmm. um, you know, it happens and it's, and it's fine. It's a legit part of, a, of our business. However, it shortchanges us and our clients and the potential and the impact that we can have. It looks in the short term, it's very reactive, um, and, and it's not looking for what's in the best interest of the business, the client, you as the person, the entrepreneur, the business owner selling, uh, the community, the world as a whole. And so we've got all these various uh, aspects uh, to look at. Also, transactional selling often can look like uh, we're, we're at the top line, meaning we're only looking at revenue, sales, sales, sales. But when you look at a balance sheet and an income statement, it's not only about the revenue and that top line. We've got to look and how do we operationalize a business that is smart and profitable? And so that's where we've got to go down the list and see what are those expenses. And then at the bottom line, what's what are we in the black or are we in the red? You know, so is it a profitable business? Is it sustainable? Is it good for the community? Is it good for the environment? And so those are the things that as a transformational seller, as someone who is showing up to say, hey, I'm not only in it for the short term, we are looking for the long term, the long term change that we can make for our clients, our community, our business, like what's that bigger impact? That's where the purpose also comes in and the people part, because it's not only about let's tick some boxes, let's hit a quota, let's hit our target. Yeah, those are great and they feel good. But just like a high, it like it sizzles, it goes away. Uh, so how do how do we invest in that longer term perspective? And that's where, um, you know, I look at we can sell from these two places. Uh, we can sell from a place of fear, which fuels transactional selling, or we can sell from a place of of love, which is all about showing up authentically, connecting with our clients with empathy. It's about looking at the thing we're selling, our offers. So, you know, we sell lavender products here because we grow lavender, but I also sell programs and coaching programs and workshops. That's an offer. That's an extension of my purpose and my company's purpose. And so how do we look at our offer as more than the thing that we're selling? What's the impact it's going to make on someone? What's the change, the shift it's going to make on someone's life, but also the community and the world? I love that. That ties in so much with what I do, because to me, it's like, it's not about branding. It's about all those things you just said, like, how do you create something that has greater impact on you, on your family, on your business, on your clients? To me, it's like this ripple effect that just continues to, to ripple out. And I love, I love that you, you shared that about the perspective of like the transactional versus transformational selling and and one is kind of from a place of fear and the other is a place from a place of love 
And I want to also point out something because I think um, when we land in that place of transactional selling, there is a lot of fear energy and fear energy can look like uncertainty, ambiguity. We've been living in a lot of that over the last couple of years that we're looking at the markets and the economy that uncertainty hasn't dissipated. It's probably it's it's definitely gotten a little bit louder and a little bit brighter out there on that. All of those things can help us show up from a, I got to make the sale, I got to close this or else, or what if nothing else comes? That's that energy that I'm speaking about. And so we might not always label it as fear or lack of confidence or doubt. And sometimes it gets masked with overconfidence. No, I got no problem. I got, I've got this, I got, and it's like, really, really. And so I think it's really important for us to be aware that fear is always in the room with us, whether we're conscious or unconscious to it. Uh, and so we've got to be mm, open to accept that it's there um, without our, our knowledge of it. And I also want to point out transactional selling is not, um, it's not bad. Um, we actually sell transactions. So I'm going to go back to, this is a transaction I sell. This is the product. It's a transaction. Okay. Our work, workshops and coaching programs, they're transactions. That's what I'm selling. What our clients are buying is the transformation. Mm. Right? Yep. And so the vehicle, the vessel in which we facilitate the transformation is that transaction what happens is we get so enamored because I love this thing we're selling. I love my coaching program. I, and then we just like talk about that thing. Like it's like, it's not just that. And that's the other part of the transaction. We start talking so much about, you know, how many coaching sessions, um, you know, the features, the, the details of that. And, you know, um, you've probably heard this matter for, it's like, you know, when we're planning a vacation, like you just mentioned earlier, you went to Bahamas and Greenland, right? Yeah. And it's like, you weren't talking about, okay, when is your luggage going to get put on the plane? Uh, what compartment will be? What, where are you sitting? Um, like all those things. You're like, okay, what are we doing in Greenland? I can't wait to get there. You know, where are we going? What are we going to see? So that ex experience. And when we're in that place of transformational selling, that's what we, that's the mindset. And that's the place we need to be in there for our clients when we're communicating that. Yeah. I use the analogy. You're not, you don't buy the plane, you buy the destination. Mm -hmm. And the, the plane is that transaction. It's the vehicle that gets you to that end result. That's all of our products and services and programs. And exactly. Yeah. So, so can I actually, so you brought something up. Uh, so working in, I've been, I worked at the bank in banking for two decades plus. Uh, and one of the lines we always had is, um, we we're it's funny to say as a bank that we did this. So when any new projects or initiatives we're working on, things and you probably have used this too. It's like I'm building the flank plane while I'm flying it. So there's this right, this moment of we are building it and flying it. And what happens in transactional selling, because we are building our planes, our offers, and flying it at the same time, we're so invested in that that we lose sight of the destination, which is where we're taking our clients. Mm. And so you always have to have that destination in mind, mm -hmm. whether you're building or flying it, you always want to start with what is the outcome that my clients want? Like exactly. what is that, that I'm really selling so that you stay on track for the build and the fly. Right? That's <laughs> right. That's right. And so if we can go forward, then we, and then once they say, yes, that's where I want to go. Thanks. Oh, that's where I want to, that's, the, what I wanted to look like, that's the problem I need solved. Then we can work backwards. As soon as they give us the yes, then they're interested. All right. So how are we going to get there? And yeah. then they want the details. So that's when we're like, am I in an aisle? Oh, I just lost your volume, Finka. Can you hear me? Now you're muted. Can you unmute? <laughs> there we go. But How about were, now? It didn't show you were right. muted, but I couldn't hear you. But now you're back. Amazing. So if you're watching and you are want to share, like, what, you know, do you feel like you're, you know, selling a transaction or a transformation, first of all? How do you feel about this selling from fear versus selling from love? Just would love to know, like, if anybody's uh, joining us. I know we've got Jill with us. Uh, she just said, hey. Hey, Jill. Hey, Jill. 
Hey, Jill. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, let us know if you've got any questions as well about selling um, from Finca. So now one thing that I heard a number of years ago, I think it was, and that was to when you're on a sales call, as an example, to not be attached to the outcome. Oh, Jill is selling transformation. I love that, Jill. I know you are. <laughs> Jill's a transformational travel coach. So she takes people mm -hmm. and like hikes Mount Kilimanjaro and does volunteer work and like transforms their lives through amazing talk about purpose, people, planet. Like Jill's the epitome of that. Awesome. So this idea of, uh, what was I now? I just lost my place. He said not attached to outcome. Yeah. Not like, so you get on a call and a lot of times you're like, oh my God, I really want this person to sign up. And so, but you're, you're in that sale. It's almost coming from, even if it is a place of love, there's a bit of fear, like, but I really want them to like, I need them to sign up or I want them. And you're attached to the outcome of their decision. And I just wanted to, to get your perspective on that. Like when you get on a call with a potential client, how are you going into that call thinking, feeling, and, and saying, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. So there are two things that we want to have happen. So we want to be non-attached to a specific outcome. We want to be so invested and attached to the best outcome that have our clients in mind. Mm, yeah. Right. So and not selling them something that isn't what they actually need. Actually need. And, and sometimes we don't even realize that we might be doing that because we need the sale. We've got to, you know, we too have got to put food on the table. We've got to provide for our families. And so it's, again, it's a, such a, a subtle line that we can quickly shift over very un undetectable. Um, it might not even be from a scare, like I, I need money. It could be the sale is proof that I am liked and I'm approved and that I'm accepted. Mm. So it could be an identification thing, right? And so there are all these things we get out of making a sale that have nothing to do with money. And so because if they give me a no, does that say something about who I am, my worth, my value? And so we've got to be conscientious of that. And so that's why I said from the beginning, fear is always there. And it's there for protection. It does not want you to get hurt, mm -hmm. right? And so it's part of our old brain and our system that's saying, hey, if you put yourself out there, if you ask for the business, if you invite this client to work with you, you might get a no. If right. you don't ask, then you might not put food on the table. So there might be also the urge to ask. You better ask. Okay, right now. Ask right now. <laughs> right now is the right time. Um, so all of that um, inner noise that's going on is a notice that you're more invested and you're attached to an outcome that's going to serve you, even if you rationalize it. Yeah, but it's in their best interest mm -hmm. to work with me, to hire me, to buy this thing. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a delicate dance that you have to go through. Um, mm -hmm. and, and again, so our non-attachment comes from this place of I'm not attached, I'm not attached to whether or not they're going to buy from me. I'm so attached that they do something that they experience the transformation they are seeking. Yeah. And so we've got four transformations we're facilitating for our clients. Um, so the first is we're either solving a problem. So actually, I'm going to give you a metaphor. So the best way I describe it is um, it's a house. Yeah. They come to the door and the first thing that triggers them to come to the door is they have a problem. That's the first transformation that they're looking to solve for. And they've noticed that, Laura, I've got this branding problem. I'm not getting clients. I'm not being seen. Like, I don't get what's going on. And I need some help. And so that's the notice that they come in and they are at your doorstep with this problem. And then they're meeting with meeting with you and you're like, oh, let's let's talk about this problem. Let's talk about what do you think the source of it? How long has it been happening? How hard has it been? What is it that really is are you struggling with? And they're like, and they tell you all of that. And then you're like, and now they're like, oh, Laura gets me. She's asking the right questions. She's 
understands from what perspective I'm coming from, she might be able to help. And then Laura says, you know what? Come on in. Let's walk into my foyer. And that's when Laura can say, okay, now tell me about the goals of your, your business. What do you really want to achieve? What's, what's really, what do you want to have happen in the next six months, in the next year? Well, I'd love to make a profit in this quarter. And by the end of the year, I want to hit 250,000 in revenue. So like, and you know, Laura, you're taking all this in and they're like, wow, Laura really gets me and cares about me. And she's really understanding me. And then Laura's like, Hey, let's, let's walk into the den. Let's talk about what's really important to you. So that's the third transformation, which is values. And so this third transformation, so the first one was problems, the second one is goals, and the third one is values. And this is where Laura's spending some time. We're talking about, so what's most important to you? What's near and dear to your heart? You know, what wakes you up in the morning and what keeps you up at night? And she learns that, you know, I've been working like crazy and I don't have a moment to come above water because I'm frantically trying to build this business online and attract ideal clients. And that hasn't been working so well. And I really want to go out there and spend some time with my kids. My daughter's a rider and get her out there riding her horse and doing that. And she's like, all right, I get that. I get that. And as we continue to talk, the fourth transformation that Laura uncovers because she gets me to her kitchen table and we start talking mm -hmm. about my dreams and what I really, really want. I'm just get goosebumps now. And I tell Laura that, you know, I really want to have a business that I don't have to feel like I'm chained to my laptop or my desk or that, you know, social media is every time this phone dings that I have to be on it. And I want to spend time, you know, traveling a little bit, you know, having that when I started the business, that whole idea of laptop lifestyle, I know it might not be as picturesque as they promoted out to be on those on Instagram, but I want a sliver of that. And can she help me? And so that's what we're doing. So we're walking them through, you know, they're coming in looking for a transactional fix. They need that hit. Mm -hmm. As business owners, leaders, we are looking to uncover more than that because we're in it with a long game for them. And so you're first going to talk about their problems. You're going to get to their goals, identify their values. And then ultimately we want to get to their dreams. Oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. So good. And do you do that all on a call? Like, is that like how you would kind of frame out like a sales call? Yeah, I would definitely, definitely. So that can all be done very quickly in a discovery call with, uh, with a client. It could be a process that the pain is so hot and so prominent right now that we can't get any further because we got to dig so deep under the problem. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so, and that then becomes part of the relationship that we build. And it's something that happens over time. And I will say it's not a one and done. Our clients are continually facing problems being, yeah. you know, having new goals pop up as soon as they achieve those other ones value shift. You go from being, um, you know, early stages of, you know, say the seasons of our life, um, you know, having young kids to, all right, they're now off to high school or driving on their own or in university. And all of a sudden my values are a little bit different on where I want to spend my time and what I'm doing. And so all of these transformations are constantly in flux. Now, the important thing is here, our clients are seeking transformations. They live in the same world that you and I live in, which is this busy tornado vortex of distraction, noise, and everybody else's agenda. All right. Our job, and so I believe this, our job as I'll call us transformational sellers or fulfillers, or if you don't like the word seller, seller, um, our job is to remind them and wake them up to what they long for, what they desire for, and continue to create those reminders. So for instance, so many people are uh, feel that when they follow up with a client, they are bothering them. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, I've sent three follow-ups. Like if I send another one, am I bothering them? Is this going to be pushy? Is this going to be, you know, uh, it's uh, awkward and it's like, oh, I don't, you know, and it's like, you're not, you're, it's not about you. You're reminding them about the dreams that they want to fulfill on. And you're championing and cheerleading the, that voice inside of them that right now 
you know, they're saying they don't have time for it. They don't have money for what if you're the person on the outside continually being that championing and cheerleading coach saying, Hey, I'm here whenever you are, but just wanted to remind you, remember when you said, blah, 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 that was important Mm -hmm. to you. Uh That's what we have to look at. And so we are not bothering up for our clients. We are, I always, I look at us as coaches, like we are coaching them to the destination they want to get to that they disclose to us. And we're continually supporting them on that, even when they give us those lines. Now is not the time. I have to check in with my partner. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't have the money. It's like, all right. And we just get to learn how to do, get better at that. Like, you know, how do you help them understand? All right. So you don't have time. So how do you prioritize? How do you prioritize? And if you don't have time, how do you know when you have time for the things? Like, how do you prioritize what is important? Have that conversation. You yeah. know? So, Yeah. I love it. Okay. We have a few questions. So I'm going to yes. just share them here. So for Aaron says, when working with B2B, how do you increase the excitement and getting the clients away from their end outcome so that they can really hear who we are and our why? Mm-hmm. So um, I would say, so when working with B2B, how do we increase excitement? Uh, stay in their problem and goals. They get excited about how you're going to solve them and the end state of where you're going to get them. So, um, really you want to, you can tie in who you are and why you do what you do, but it's first getting really clear on, like you said, the problem that they're looking to solve. Um, what were the other, how did you, yeah. Like, so there's, there's the before, they come to you or while they're with you. And then there's this after they're really interested in what's going to happen, happen after as we work together. Yes. Weave into who are you and why are you in that story? But at the same time, they see you through how you will get them what they want. How will you solve their problem, help them achieve their goals? As you tell those stories, you can tell them, Hey, this is, how we've done it. This is how we've done it with past clients. This outcome that you're seeking, hey, let me tell you a story. And that story could be, you know, we worked with company X. This is what happened. This is what they're struggling with. This is how we showed up. Um, They, you know, decided to put on the back burner, but this work is so important to us and this is why, and then your why shows up. And so through that storytelling um, of case studies and examples of how you've demonstrated in the past, is a great way to weave it in. But at the same time, we want to always be weaving our story in their story. How does it fit in so they can see it? They don't, they don't really care. They care about us. Um, you know, I've been in the branding space for so many years and branding is important for us because that's how we have our confidence to go out there, how we differentiate ourselves. And it's important to them them being our clients when they understand that we can solve their problems, how we solve them. And I think it's that how, you know, hearing who you are and, and why you do what you do, that should be existing everywhere. So if they see something that you put, they've had a discovery call with you or before that, even they see something you're like, oh, I really like what this company is all about. Or afterwards they're checking out your social media or your website. You're like, yeah, this totally aligns with my value. So it's it's not just like, obviously on the sales call, you need to be like, okay, now here's how I can, or we can help you, right? Like at some point you need to start to talk about Absolutely. like- Absolutely. And it is it, 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 that you can provide for them. And and it's how does that align with with what their goals are? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and the sales call, I, I you know, always encourage us to look at it as- um, it's, it's, it's not one thing. It's not one call. Um, I think of, you know, um, the B2B, like for my corporate clients, working with them and taking them through that process, it's initially a, like a, an open conversation. What are you looking for? Um, we sort of that discovery, uncover what are their four transformations that they're looking for. And then the next step is just a discussion document. So I put some ideas together. I summarize their their transformation that they're seeking. So the problems, values, goals, and and dreams, and their purpose all in that document. Uh, I give them a couple of solutions that I'm thinking might work for them based on what they told me. And then we set up that second call and we go through the discussion. 
and still no pricing. Now we're, we're talking about, you know, did I get your, your problems correct? Did I get your values? Did I get what your outcome you're, you're driving for? And they're like, yes, yes, yes. All right, great. We're on the same page. Sometimes like, oh, could you just refine that for me? It, really, let's word it this way. Like they get literally into, you know, into the document. So it's a working live document that we go through. And, and then we go through the ideas. Yeah, I like that. I don't like that. Can you combine this and that? All right, great. And so they're part of the process with us, especially for our B2B clients. Like they're even our B2C clients, like they're part of the process with us. And then it's like, all right, so then let's set up another call and let me put some, uh, a program proposal together for you and give you some options and what that could look like. And then we set up call number three. And that's when we go through more details now, more specific because they've given more information. Uh, and you know, they're giving us yeses along the way because they're, and they're collaborating with us. So it's, it's like a very collaborative process. And then that third stage, we have that third conversation with the proposal and we talk about pricing and investment then. Uh, and then from there, literally the, you, it's done. Like then the agreement and all the details and procurement or then, you know, the supplier agreements and all that stuff get signed up afterwards. Uh, and then we go into delivery and yeah. that is a start of a whole new process. Yeah. Like, absolutely. you know, it is, it is like, you know, that whole term of closing a sale, that's not what we're doing. Like we're, we are starting an, like a, a relationship and transformational journey. That's what we're doing. Like that's the, the end state. We are starting a journey, not closing a sale. And oh, from I'm there, like the delivery, the delighting, the ongoing, the refer, like the devotion that we want to create, that they love us so much that they only want to work with us or that they only want to refer to us. And that's what we're creating afterwards. Ah, oh, amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Dawn has a, qu a couple of questions. So when she asked for advice doing sales calls, but I think you just kind of walked through that. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think Dawn, we've kind of answered that. I think you have some guidance on that in your book as well. Do you not? On kind of like a sales call kind of Process. I do. I do. I do. So yeah, here's my book. Pick it up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, well, you're going to pop the links. I think if you want to go in afterwards, maybe just share the link for how people can buy the book. Absolutely. But in there too, I talk about uh, a client's, a client readiness scale. Like not everyone's always ready to buy right now. So we have to realize, you know, on a scale of one to 10, like a 10 is like ready. I'm ready. Let's go dive in right in. You know, you know, for the most part, you know, we're getting them from a seven to an eight eight to a nine. And often you will find yourself negotiating with a readiness scale of two, like so far from being ready. And we're like, I wonder why they're not buying. I wonder why they're not saying yes, because they're nowhere near ready. They're not even aware that they have the problem. <laughs> they're just, you know, and so we've got to be, so I think the client readiness scale is super important because it helps us um, put into context, you know, how ready based on what we know about them. Are they aware that they have the problem? Are they ready to sell, solve the problem? Are they the decision maker? Uh, do mm -hmm. they have the funds and investment and willingness? Are there other competing, especially our B2B clients, they have competing priorities. They've got their boss's priorities in the organization, but then all the other initiatives that are on the go. So there's so much going on. It's not really about you why they say no. It is yeah. so about them. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so here's Dawn's question, and I think in some ways I feel like this is also this is a branding problem, probably more than a than a uh, sales problem. But she said, "I'm a graphic designer, but I don't think I'm showing the transformation very well because most most clients I work with just need a website." Mm -hmm. And Dawn, I totally get that, right? Because if if they think they just need a website, right? But you can't be selling a website if you're selling a website. You're selling a commodity. You're selling that. You're selling the. It's the transaction. transaction. That's the transaction. Yeah. So if then you, then it probably is the case that you're not actually selling the transformation through your branding and your messaging, but possibly also when you're talking to people, you know, on on a call. So I have people come to my, me sometimes. They're like, I need a website or I need a logo, and I was like, we we only do that for people who go through brand camp with me first, right? So do you have a unique process and journey that you take clients on that is different from other graphic designers or that, you know, what they're offering. Otherwise you are competing, um, you know, and they'll start to just compare you to other people on more on price point, as opposed to that emotional connection with you. So I think, I think if you follow some of that framework that Finka shared in terms of like, 
connecting with them, really understanding their problem, their values, their like what they really want and their dreams, then you're going to stop selling a website or, or having people just ask for a website. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, I'm going to say it's, you know, Don, I think it's, it's being really cognizant that they, they, hmm, there's the want and the need. They want the website. They say, I want a website. What they need is to be able to illustrate the impact that their website, what they do, how are they going to visually, uh, with words, with like their website's their store. <laughs> so where, where's like, where's everything going to be placed in that store? What shelf and you know, how, what's the experience going to be when they walk into the shop? Uh, that's the experience that they need to be creating. And so if they're just creating just a website and they, that's a transaction, that's what they're actually going to deliver to their client, which again is going to limit sales, limit clients, limit potential, all those things. And so for you as a graphic designer, you know, start sitting back. I often found it for me, I couldn't initially see what my transformation was, uh, but it took some time. And so I think what we have to do is look at our work, like step back and give it some time and continue to work the work, meaning just get out there and keep putting yourself out there, keep working with clients, uh, don't hold back keep asking, keep inviting. If we don't have enough clients, it's probably because we're not putting ourselves out there enough. Like in our self from love research, 86% of entrepreneurs, service-based professionals do not, this is scary, 86% do not consistently communicate their offers. Mm. Wow. It's really, right? So 14% do. Hence, so often what happens, the reason I don't have enough sales is because I'm not actually selling. <laughs> that's like, that's the, what it literally boils down to. So when we can solve that problem, then all of a sudden we have another problem to solve. It's not anymore. It's like, okay, so why aren't they saying yes? Or, you know, what else might be happening, but we've got to do that first step. You've got to actually get out there and sell. Amazing. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. I feel like that was jam packed. That actually made me go, Ooh, there's some things I need to go back. I want to go back and watch this again. So I'm like, I can't be making notes while we're chatting, but thank you so much. That was so valuable. Thank you for the amazing questions. Um, and I really appreciate you and the work that you're doing and just that awareness around the fact that we can sell from love and we can sell a transformation versus this transaction. And uh, I feel like we could have a part two because I feel like we could dive even deeper, but thank you so much for joining me, Finca, and for everyone who joined us live. And if you're watching the replay, we'll also make sure to pop the link in here for Finca's book and podcast. Fantastic. Thank you, Laura, for thank having you. me here. It was a great conversation and for all your great questions. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Bye everyone. Bye.